Vikings Valhalla concludes its run with a satisfying yet incomplete final season, leaving viewers wanting more. The season sees the main characters, Leif, Freydis, and Harold, face numerous challenges and personal growth. Despite the series' cancellation, the ending provides closure for some characters while hinting at future possibilities. Leif embarks on a journey to discover a mysterious land, driven by visions and a desire for purpose. Freydis endures hardships, including imprisonment and persecution, but remains steadfast in her beliefs and emerges as a symbol of Viking resilience. Harold achieves his dream of becoming King of Norway, but grapples with the sacrifices he made along the way, leading to a complex and conflicted character. The season also explores the political intrigue and power struggles in England, setting the stage for the Norman conquest and the end of the Viking era. The series Vikings Valhalla took an excessive amount of time to establish a clear objective for the character Leif and adequately equip him for his significant expedition, which was the exploration of North America. The inclusion of Eric the Red, the father of Leif and Freydis, allowed for the exploration of some aspects of their background, such as Leif's prior visit to America. Leif recounted an incident during his journey with his father, where they were unexpectedly diverted from their intended course. During this incident, Leif caught sight of an unfamiliar area in the distant horizon. This land was characterized by towering trees and other elements that were previously unfamiliar to him in Greenland. Leif designated it as the Golden Land, and while Eric remained skeptical, Freydis held a firm belief in it. Freydis was trying to find a place to settle the Joms Vikings after Magnus poisoned them, while Leif, still reeling from the tragedy of the raid on Syracuse, resolved to locate the Golden Land. Freydis resolved to seek out the Golden Land that Leif had promised and build a new home for her people there, away from Magnus and the Christians who were pursuing them. Since the actual Leif Erikson arrived in North America over 500 years before Christopher Columbus, their Golden Land is North America. Freydis, meanwhile, made it to Vinland coastal North America, though the details of her fate are murky. The Greenlander's saga states that Freydis betrayed her people and slew them upon arrival to Vinland, but Eric the Red's saga states that she battled against the natives who assaulted them. Olaf Haraldsson, Harald's half-brother, also desired the throne of Norway, and this desire has been evident since the first season of Vikings Valhalla. Even after Olaf passed away in season two, Harald still didn't have an easy road to the throne because Svein, the son of Knut, was king with Queen Elfgifu serving as regent, and Magnus, Olaf's son, might have claimed the crown as well. Harald had saved enough money to build an army after serving Emperor Romanos for seven years in Constantinople, but his plans went terribly wrong when George Maniex had him accused for the death of the emperor. The death penalty sentence was a watershed moment in Harald's narrative after it, he was icy and merciless. Fleeing to gather his army, Harald encountered Maniacs and killed him in front of Empress Zo. After Magnus assassinated Svein and usurped the Norwegian throne, Harald came in Kattegat. As a result of a joint vote, the Jarls recognized Magnus and Harald as equal heirs to the crown. Magnus insisted on three things before they could agree the consecration of Olaf's shrine, a vow from Harald that Norway would never return to its former ways, and the burning of the pagan witch Freydis. While Freydis was being executed, Leif came to her rescue, and they fled. Meanwhile, Harald went up to Magnus, challenged him, and managed to turn the king's guard against him. Harald put Magnus in prison and established his name as Norway's sole monarch, Harald Hardradada. Even though he shared the throne with his nephew Magnus, the actual Harald Hardrada was a king of Norway. It was already determined that Swain would inherit Denmark and Harald would obtain Norway when Magnus passed away without an heir less than a year later. On the other hand, Harald stated his intention to raise an army and depose Swain, in addition to proclaiming himself king of Denmark and Norway. In pursuit of this goal, he launched brutal attacks against Danish coastlines, but despite his dominance in these engagements, he was unable to conquer Denmark. As part of their 1064 Unconditional Peace Treaty, Harald and Swain agreed to keep their kingdoms inside their original borders. In retaliation for anyone who dared to defy him, Harald brutally punished his subjects with crippling and even fatalities. He kept his grip on power by maintaining a private standing army, and his hard ruler reputation was earned via his power battle with the Norwegian nobility. The death of Harald at the hands of the Danes at the Battle of Stamford Bridge is often believed to have formally ended the Viking Age. 
There was a shock in season three of Vikings Valhalla, which followed the second season's apparent hidden affair between Harold and Elena Empress Zoe. Because he was unable to have a child of his own, Emperor Romanos persuaded the Empress to seduce Harold, and it was then that he told Harold about their affair. When this, Harold's dark turn began, and he was eventually sentenced to death. Meanwhile, Zoe was last seen watching Harold kill maniacs, and she ended up marrying him when he threatened her. Our genuine Empress at the age of 50, Zoe wed Emperor Romanos Argyros, and she made extreme efforts to conceive, even resorting to the use of magical charms, potions and amulets. Because of the rift that opened up between them due to Zoe's infertility, Romanos had a mistress and Zoe had other affairs. After secretly discussing elevating her servant Michael to the position of emperor, Zoe confessed her love for him. Michael and Zoe were thought to be plotting to poison Romanos when he fell ill. On the very day that Romanos passed away, Michael married Zoe and became King Michael IV. Michael, though, was ill-equipped to hold the office of emperor and instead gave great authority to his brother, John the Orphan Atrophos. Michael banished Zoe from politics and relegated her to the gynecology ward, where she would be subject to close observation, because Zoe thought he would be a more faithful spouse than Romanos. After skipping most of Vikings Valhalla Season 2 to fight in Denmark, King Canute returned in Season 3 with a tragic ending. Canute's health declined after his visit to the Vatican to broker an agreement with the Pope, and he knew he would die soon, so he gathered all his sons, Emma's sons, and their son Hartha Canute to Kattegat to decide who would rule England after him. King Canute died in England with Emma, but he told Godwin he knew of his aspirations to join the royal family so one of his sons could become king. As a Christian Viking, King Canute received the official Christian burial of a king of England, attended by Godwin, Emma, the king's court, and others. Canute's second funeral was private soon after. Emma's Viking soldiers burned his body aboard a ship at his Viking funeral. Emma and Canute's Viking troops alone attended this second funeral. Emma commemorated Canute as England's first Viking ruler by giving him a Viking funeral. No Viking funeral was recorded for Seanot the Great. His grave was in Winchester's Old Minster. Roundhead warriors dumped Snute's bones across the floor and in other funeral chests during the English Civil War. The bones were recovered and placed in their chests after the monarchy was restored 